For this video, I wanted to create a short introduction and guide on how to use your radio remotes to control your off-camera flashes. So we're gonna be talking about channels, about groups, high-speed sync, we'll be covering all the basic functionality that's universal to these devices. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. Let's dive in, let's go ahead and power on our remote, and let's go ahead and power on the flash as well. Now, the first thing that I want you to do before you even test anything is make sure that your flash is actually in the right mode. There are several modes that each of these flashes have, but what we're going to do is jump into the menu and just make sure that the air functionality is actually turned on. This is the wireless radio function for the A1. Every flash will have something similar where you actually have to enable the radio system because they'll have other systems of wireless available to you like infrared or optical. So what we want to do is make sure that we select the radio function. So here on this remote, we would select air. If it's set to off, we would choose on. Okay, so make sure the radio mode is turned on. That's number one. Number two, we're going to go to the channel. So if these are not on the same channel, they can't speak to each other. So we want to make sure that the remote and the flash are set currently to channel one. So if we look at the remote, it's actually set to channel five and then it says A afterwards. A is the group and we're gonna talk about that in just a second. But you'll notice if I press the test button right now, well, nothing happens because they're not communicating with each other. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and go back into the menu and we're gonna select channel and we're gonna to go to one. Once these are on the same channel, then if I press test, it's gonna pop and we see it pop, okay. So let me explain exactly what's happening with the channels and that's gonna take us also into groups, which is number three. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring out my handy pen because I'm a fantastic artist. I, I'm, not, I, I'm really terrible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a school. And this school has four classrooms. Uh, don't mind that the architect for this school doesn't really know how to create any other shapes other than a square. It'll be fine. So what I want you to think of is every one of these classrooms, I'm gonna label classroom one, classroom two, classroom three, and classroom four. These represent different channels. And if you're standing in one room, let's say you're standing in channel two, in room two, you can't communicate with anybody that's in another room. Now here's the important piece because all of these remotes will also have another functionality that generally will help you to find the channel where the least amount of people are standing, okay? Let me explain what I mean by this for a second. If you're in an area that has a lot of photographers, maybe it's a popular beach location, whatever it might be, there might be a lot of people using channel one. And because of that, they're gonna be unintentionally, if they have the exact same remote or the exact same flashes. So let's say everybody is using a Godox because those are popular, inexpensive flashes, right? If they're all using channel one and everybody's on the beach shooting, everybody will be triggering each other's flashes inadvertently. So usually you can do one of two things. Sometimes these remotes will have a functionality built in to help you find the least occupied channel, okay? other radio interference can play a part, but that's not important. But the other thing you can do is just simply change your channel. So if I feel like, hey, you know what, there might be a lot of people at this beach using Profoto, they're probably gonna be using channel one, I'm gonna go ahead and change the channel to like, let's go change it to six, something random that I don't think anybody else is gonna be using. And I'm gonna do the same thing on my flash. Once I have that set, I'm gonna pop off a quick shot and we're good to go. Inside of those channels, we also have groups, okay? So groups, I want you to think of them, we're gonna go A, B, C, D. And think of them as an arrangement of desks or groups of students or whatever you wanna call them. I don't know what they are, it's a classroom, so maybe they're students. 
So we have an arrangement of these different groups and all of these students can essentially talk to each other, right? They're in the same classroom, they're in the same channel, they can talk to each other. But we can give them each different directions. So for example, I could say, hey, group A, I'd like you guys to stand in the left corner because you guys were really naughty and that's terrible. Group B, I want you guys to talk a little bit louder. Group C, I'd like you guys to be a little bit more quiet but you can give each independent group its own guidance. And similarly, we can do the exact same thing with our remotes. So I'm on channel six, the remote is on channel six, we're on group A currently, but if I wanted to flip to group B, I could actually flip to group B and power it up. Now notice that group A is not gonna change. So if I pull the power down on group B, well, this flash doesn't change. If I switch to group A, now, when I pull the power down, it does change. So that's how we kind of keep things separate. So make sure that the remote and the flashes are in the same channel. Then you can divide them into groups depending on what you'd like these flashes to do in a particular scene. For me, it's simple to set my main to group A, and then if I have like a fill, or if I have a rim, I'll keep assigning these to different groups as I kind of go down. So I'll, I'll kind of work from that first light as A, then the second light as B, the third light as C. Unless I want all those lights to do the same thing, then it wouldn't matter. You just keep them on the same group. Next, we're gonna talk about the exposure modes. So you'll notice on this remote that I have the ability to flip this from manual over to TTL. Now TTL or through the lens, it's basically allowing the flash to take a reading and to dial in a setting that it thinks is appropriate. And from there, we would make compensations up or down. Honestly, if you're getting into off-camera flash, I probably highly recommend you to stick with manual. That way you have complete control over each of these lights. You know what their power setting is gonna be and it's not gonna change. Number four, you're gonna have sync. So they might call it different things on different devices, but it's essentially first curtain sync versus second curtain sync versus high speed sync. I'll explain what each of these means. So first curtain sync means that the flash is gonna fire as soon as the shutter is opening, okay? So if the shutter speed is very quick, it doesn't necessarily matter too much. But if the shutter speed is slower, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. And that's why we also have second curtain sync. So when you're shooting in scenes where there might be a little bit of motion and maybe you're at 1 30th of a second, What's gonna happen is second curtain sync will tell the flash to fire towards the end of the exposure when the shutter is closing. So on a long exposure, that means the flash is gonna wait until the last moment right before the shutter closes before it fires. Next, we have high speed sync. Let's talk about this for a brief moment. Most cameras and remote systems are gonna be limited to a shutter speed of around 1 200th of a second. This means that if your shutter speed is faster than this number, the camera can't tell the radio to communicate with the flash quick enough, essentially, to fire the flash while the shutter is, is open. So you end up having a kind of banding issue, and it, you'll notice this, if you put your flash, or let's say you put your shutter speed at 1 500th of a second, you might shoot an image and here's your beautiful subject here, and you'll notice that only the top part or a certain piece of the image is actually flashed, and the other part is dark. This is because your sync speed is too fast. We have to slow the shutter speed down. Or you can flip into high-speed sync. Now this lets us take our shutter speed to 1 500th, 1 1,000th. What's gonna happen is the flash is gonna pulse to make sure that it can get a shot that's lit. It's not important how this works. All that's important to know is that when you go into high-speed sync, the flash has to use more power and pulsing, which means you get less flash power. So the total available power of your flash is gonna drop based on the shutter speed that you set your camera to. Higher the shutter speed, the less power is gonna make it through. Only because the, the, the flash has to pulse that much quicker, okay? It'll make sense in practice. So go put this in practice. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Last, let's just talk briefly about power settings. So Profoto does their stuff a little bit different where a power setting is just a straight number. So right now it's giving me a seven. 
they set their numbers to where 10 is essentially one over one on other devices. So this means you're using 100% of your flash power. So on a Profoto remote, it'll say 10. That means 100% flash power. On a typical remote that you might see, it might say one over one. That means 100% flash power. So if you switch this to one half or on a Profoto remote, if I go down to nine, that equals 50% power. That's the amount of light that you're actually getting out of the unit. And we can go in increments, like we can go in you know, 0.1 increments on this. Um, every flash unit will have its own increments, but these full increments where you go from 100% to 50% to 25%, those are referred to as stops. So if you're an assistant or if you have your assistant operating a light and you say, turn the power up by one stop, that means double the power. So if you were at 25%, one stop takes you to 50% flash power. This would be one quarter power. This would be one half power. Likewise, if you're at full power and you say, lower the stops by two, two stops, less light. That means take it down to 50% and then to 25% or one quarter power. That's it for this introduction to using your flash radio system. Now it's time for you to get out and shoot. But before you go, engage with us. This helps us dramatically on YouTube. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to the channel. If you guys wanna follow me personally, you can find me at Pi Jersa or on the SR Lounge channel as well on YouTube. We'll see you guys in the next video.